Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who have watched my videos in the past, I appreciate you, thank you so much for being here. And for everyone that's new, hi, welcome. Uh, my name is Alicia Nicole, and I'm so happy to have you with me today. I am actually making dinner, or about to start preparing dinner for the guys. Uh, they'll be home in like maybe two hours or so. Uh, so anyway, I figured I would just hop on here and chat with you all as I prepare dinner for them. So tonight they are having meatloaf and mashed potatoes and gravy and biscuits. I've had way more creativity than I could even imagine with coming up on ideas of what to have for dinner. Like what I did was over here we have our calendar and there's a note section on the side. And so I literally listed out like all these meals and it's meals that we typically enjoy, but they were just like boom, 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 like coming off the top of my head of different things that we could have uh, throughout the month. And so I've just been kind of going through and like putting a check mark beside the different menu items that we uh, have. So that way I can kind of keep it, you know, creative for them for this month. Anyway, let me get started on this dinner. So you may have noticed in one of my other videos that I was wearing a band-aid on the inner part of my hand. Mm. So for those of you that are new here, <laughs> I have started this organizational journey uh, with my family in terms of like purchasing things for our home that can just help make it a bit more organized. And so you'll see behind me that we got a uh, spice rack. So, you know, we're starting small y'all working our way up. So we got a spice rack and then over here, hopefully where I'm pointing, you can see I bought one of those like rotating, I don't know if they're called Lazy Susans or what, but anyway, it's a rotating plate. <laughs> and so that has our, um, it has our olive oil on it and like salt, pepper and butter and things like that. So they're not just all lined up against the wall like they were previously, you know, it looks a little bit neater, you know, we kind of spin it around. So anyway, in addition to that, I also bought some, some containers, like those clear containers that everyone's been using. So I bought uh, them for the fridge and also for our pantry. We have a pantry over there and one right here. So for the fridge, I got the egg holder. I think it's so adorable, right? That you can look inside and see how many eggs you have. Uh, and then also I bought um, some containers for uh, soda. So like cans, you know, canned soda. So that's in the fridge. And then I bought this little bin because um, I have started juicing. And so if you haven't watched my video yet, oh, this glove already has a hole in it. So if you haven't watched my video yet about my cold press juicer, like you, you need to check that out. Anyway, as a part of that whole process, I bought this little container that has a lid on it and it's, it's clear, see-through container. And the purpose of it is to put uh, vegetables in it. And so there's certain fruits and vegetables that I have reserved for my juicing. And so I didn't want to put it in the regular drawer uh, in the refrigerator for produce because I don't want the guys to like eat it all. So I had the bin, right? And it had all these stickers on it. There was like the price sticker. There was like labels. It was just all kinds of stickers and like sticky stuff on it. What I should have done was watched a video on how to safely remove all that sticky stuff instead of, where am I going? I need a uh, cutting board. Oh, cutting board. And then I also need uh, a plastic bag for these potato skins. So anyway, what I should have done, like I said, was I should have watched a video that clearly explained how I could um, remove all of the sticky and all of the labels, right? Uh, and I've seen people do it before. Um, I think I've seen some videos where they like boil it off or something. I don't know. Anyway, I should have watched one of those videos, but I didn't. I did the old fashioned, let me just get a razor blade and like scrape it off with the razor blade. And so that's what I was doing. Scraping it off with the razor blade and like peeling the label at the same time. And I got to this part where like there was like strips of paper still attached. And so I'm holding on to the bin and I am scraping like this and I got like a nice like ledge going, right? And so I'm underneath the uh, paper and I'm sliding ever so gently with this razor blade and 
eventually, I guess I must have been pushing up instead of pushing straight across. But anyway, the razor blade slips from underneath the paper and hits me right here in my in the crease right here of my hand. So I've been dealing with that. Talk about pain. And initially, what we you know we put some medicine on it, put a bandaid on it, and so I was doing my best to kind of keep it like this because I really wanted you know for my skin to heal, right? And so I was keeping it like this so that it would heal in that position. But what ended up happening is the inside part of my thumb and like the top of my thumb started to get numb. And I didn't even realize this, but even when I was sleeping, I was still kind of sleeping with my hand like this. So anyway, by keeping my hand like that, I ended up like injuring my thumb a little bit. And so I've had to like rehab it on my own, like move it around or whatever to keep it from being so stiff. And I realized the issue when I went to reach for something and I kind of turned my thumb in a weird way and I felt a pain like from the nail all the way down. And so that let me know that the way that I was holding my thumb was not helpful at all. So it's it's just been too much so wearing these gloves just in case as I'm preparing this meal you know if I were to reopen uh, my wound but Lord please just let it heal properly anyway that was a long story just to let you know uh, the reason why I was wearing that band-aid in uh, one of my other videos and then also why uh, I am wearing gloves right now I keep saying that I'm going to create a video that introduces who I am and I will um, but you know, since we're just having chit chat right now, I'll just kind of share with you a little bit what I do. So I work for Microsoft. Um, I started my career right after high school. I was in the military. <laughs> so I was in the Navy. I was in the Navy for eight years. I was an electronics technician. And uh, as a part of my time being in the Navy, my job with the Navy primarily was working on handheld radios, like fixing them and troubleshooting them. Uh, so handheld radios, satellite communications. I did some stuff on an aircraft carrier as well. So I worked on flight deck communications uh, and it was, it was all like very wild and interesting work. It's just so funny when I think back, like that was uh, a time in my life. And I was so young. Cause like I said, I joined like a month after graduating high school, I joined the Navy. And so, <laughs> and, and yeah. So anyway, um, I got an opportunity though to travel uh, as a part of the White House Communications Agency. And so I was stationed there. Uh, so yeah, we were essentially roadies for the president, the vice president, the first lady, like all of these different uh, individuals that deal with the executive office of the president. We got to travel with them and set up communications. And so I did that for a time and then I broke my ankle. And so I couldn't travel anymore because the equipment and stuff that we have to move around and climbing up on top of buildings and just, it's pretty strenuous, it's a lot. So. What I ended up doing was getting reassigned to our training academy. So I went from doing the travel mission to training people on how to do that mission. And so that was pretty fun. Uh, and during that time when I was uh, part of the training academy, I um, had an opportunity to work with this company, a software company, and they were kind of designing different applications and implementing different applications for us. And so when I got out of the military, they hired me to work for them as a business process analyst. And so it was my responsibility to um, capture requirements for other software applications and other solutions and like train people on how to use those solutions and work with the developers to get it implemented and like document all the processes and stuff. And so that was a fun job. So I did that for a season. And that company uh, was, or is a Microsoft partner. And so, a recruiter from Microsoft found me on LinkedIn. Uh, and hopefully y'all know what LinkedIn is. It's like a professional version of, of Facebook. Although some days it does feel like, it. goodness, I can't hold on to anything in these gloves. Although some days it feels like it has just become Facebook. But anyway, one of the recruiters from Microsoft found me on LinkedIn, asked if I'd be interested in applying and I said yes. And uh, at that point it was way more technical. Like I started writing code and troubleshooting and like helping customers um, implement our technology and so over time I realized that like the implementing of the technology it, it wasn't my jam I still very much enjoyed like writing the documentation about the technology training people on how to use it 
use it creating like newsletters and things like that, like getting people excited about the technology. And so my manager at the time and my mentor suggested that I look into communications and marketing and PR. I was able to do a career change. And so it's still funny to me to think about now how like my career started in the military as an electronics technician. And then I spent eight years working at that Microsoft partner in various roles from being the business process analyst to being an engagement manager to running the quality assurance and testing team to being a trainer, just like all kinds of stuff. And then eventually I figured out what it is. I have no grip <laughs> because of this thumb. So don't mind me as I keep tossing these potatoes around. Uh, but anyway, yeah, then to move, make my way to Microsoft and to work in the engineering space. And now I'm working in the communication space and like I have lived, okay? <laughs> like there's still so much more that I feel like I can do, that I need to do, that I offer to everyone. Like, oh, man, God is so good. Let me just say that. He has just carried me through so many instances in my life where I was just kind of questioning like, mm, is this right? <laughs> Should I be doing this? Like, why am I doing this? How am I going to do this? Like all these times where I've really been questioning like, what is my life right now? Where am I right now? Like God has just been right there with me. So Microsoft has nine employee resource groups and these are just like connections for us across the company. We're members of that group. They are folks who you have some sort of, uh, you have something in common with. That's like the best way I can describe it. So I am a member of Blacks and Microsoft because, hello, I'm also a member of military at Microsoft because again, I was in the military and we kind of share ideas, recommendations, we help each other, we network. I'm also a member of the Women at Microsoft Employee Resource Group. So it's just a way to like really find your place in the company and like find your tribe and get connected. But it's also a way that you can like easily give back uh, and, and really spread your wings. Like if there's something that you're interested in doing that those employee resource groups are invaluable. So if you have them where you work, I highly recommend that you get connected and like get involved. Like don't just become a member just to be able to say that you're a member, but like be active in those communities because you just never know like who you might connect with or um, when you may be in need and someone in that community can like help you out in a situation like they're the best. Now I will say this, it is work. Baby, let me tell you, it is work. It's like, it's in addition to your regular job. It's not for the faint of heart. But if you have a passion for like giving back, for helping the other people, um, whether it's around like career or community outreach or um, talent, you know, recruitment, you know, like ugh, professional development, like if any of those things are your forte, I highly recommend that you find if you don't have employee resource groups at your at your company. And like, it doesn't make sense to start one because that's an option too. You could get with your HR team or your global diversity team and figure out how to get them started. But if none of that is an option, there's also professional networks out there that you can sign up with uh, to get connected so that you can, you know, give back. It's just, it's like I said, it's work, but it's just so rewarding uh, when you're able to connect with people. So in terms of what I like to do for fun, since we're on a roll here and I'm telling you guys about myself, I'm probably actually just gonna turn this into my intro video. <laughs> so it's an introduction. It's not one of those fancy ones, it's me just cooking, but I don't know, we'll see. In addition to volunteering and like uh, doing things in terms of you know helping others for like work and stuff like that, what else do I like to do for fun? I love to travel. I know you didn't ask, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. I love to travel. And I feel it started because I joined the military because coming from a small town, um, you know, we would do like a little bit of travel, you know, like go to Disney World or something like that. Uh, but it wasn't like big time travel. And so my first airplane ride was when I went to basic training for the Navy in Great Lakes, Illinois. And that's funny that that was my first plane ride, but it was because pretty much my family, if we went somewhere, we was driving. Okay. <laughs> we were driving. We were on somebody's bus, something like that. 
Uh, same thing for school, right? School trips, you're on a bus. So anyway, uh, so it was pretty fun to be able to get on the plane. Although it was like, girl, you're on this plane, not for fun. You're on this plane to go to basic training. But but still, it was it was a good experience. And so after being in the Navy and like I was stationed on an aircraft carrier. And so I got to go see other parts of the world and visit other countries. And at the time, I was still pretty young. So I didn't fully appreciate it. But now looking back... Uh, I think that's what put me in the position where I, I felt like traveling was my thing. And so, this is going to be a lot of potatoes. See, this is what happens when you're talking while you're working. Sometimes you end up doing a little too much. But uh, yeah, so traveling. Traveling is one of my favorite things to do. I used to read a lot, uh, but I have kind of been busy with like work and stuff. So... Uh, I do have a couple books. Um, you've probably seen them in some of my videos. They've been like behind me in the bookshelves in my office. So I do want to get back into that. So if you have any suggestions of good books that you're reading, let me know. I'm more into uh, fiction, um, love stories about, you know, successful black women doing their thing. <laughs> so I love reading those types of stories. Um, yeah, I'd say that for books, like more fiction and anything that's like really talking about, you know, the success of black women. I'm down for that. Uh, I've read some nonfiction too. Like I read Becoming because like who hasn't? <laughs> I read Trevor Noah's book, uh, Born a Crime. That was very good. So I've got a couple like sprinkled in there that are nonfiction. I also love movies. So let's see. What is, I don't have a favorite movie. I know how people are like, oh, this is my favorite movie. Chris has a favorite movie. And no matter how many ways you slice it, <laughs> I'm cutting it, maybe say slice it. No, and no matter how many ways like you ask, you know, it always lands back to, yeah, that's my favorite movie. And I'm like, how do you have a favorite movie? And he loves movies. He's seen so many movies. I'm like, out of all the movies that you've seen before that one and since that one, you mean to tell me that one movie is still your favorite? I've never understood that. Same thing with songs or people will say like, this is my favorite artist or this is my favorite uh well, I do have a favorite DJ, so I can't say that. But it's like, this is my favorite, you know, um, musical artist. Or this is my favorite, I don't know. To me, it's not like like favorites, right? Like, it's like, this is something that I really like right now. Or this is something that I'm into in the moment. But I don't feel like I have a favorite movie. Now, I do enjoy watching, like when it comes to shows, like TV shows. I like sci-fi stuff. I don't know, like looking at futuristic things uh, like The the Expanse, if you've never seen that on uh, Amazon Prime, that's good. Uh, yeah, so um, there's, oh man, if you haven't seen Altered Carbon oof, on Netflix, like mm, do yourself a favor, go check it out because that's good. I like that show too. So yeah, so I do like sci-fi. I prefer to watch sci-fi over reading sci-fi, so that's just... Uh, just a little note about me. I think I'm actually done with the potatoes. So let me just split them off in half. I am going to rinse these bad boys and set aside the ones that I'm saving for myself and get them boiling on the stove for the fellas. All right, friends, I'm back. <laughs> Collected a few things right here to share with you all. So I have my potatoes on boil in a pot back there on the stove. And now it is time for me to prepare this meatloaf. Uh, fun facts. So um, I've only made meatloaf once. <laughs> I made it once uh, because I had a subscription with Blue Apron and there was a recipe in there for meatloaf and it turned out okay. 
uh, I feel like it had carrots in it or something that made it like different than what you would tr think of like a traditional meatloaf. But today the plan is to make a traditional meatloaf. However, instead of putting like that ketchup-y type coating or topping, right? Instead of the ketchup-y type uh, topping, I am not going to put a topping on it because we will have gravy with this. So it's gonna be meatloaf with gravy, of course the mashed potatoes and some biscuits. And so for that reason, I am looking at two different recipes online. Um, I may link them, we'll see how they taste, how they turn out. Uh, but I'm just kind of looking at both the recipes and one has something that the other one does it. And I'm like, ah, what if I just combine them, right? Like what if I combine the two? what will happen there so that's the game plan uh for this for this meatloaf so oh let me go through some of the uh, ingredients that you see here i don't feel like chopping up onions today so i'm cheating and i'm going to use some minced onion uh once it gets rehydrated it's all the same uh we also have some black pepper and some salt i have some worcestershire sauce uh breadcrumbs a, a staple one recipe calls for milk also in the mixture. The other one does not. So I'm going to add milk. And of course, they both call for eggs. And this is the little container that I mentioned to you all that we now put our eggs in. It's so cute. I love it. And that way, at a glance, when I'm doing my shopping list, I can easily see if we've run out of eggs. And then one of the recipes called for butter. Although I think the butter may have been for the actual uh, gravy when it's time to make that. Not necessarily for the meatloaf itself. But anyway. I have butter over here too. So uh, now it's time for me to get the ground beef into the bowl. And so fun fact time, right? Yeah, we're talking about fun fact stuff here. I hate touching raw meat. I refuse to touch raw meat. It's comical to watch me handle and deal with raw meat when I don't have gloves. I'm talking a slab of ribs in the sink and I am like a surgeon. I've got the knife. I've got uh, a big fork, I've got spatulas, like the whole nine. I'm doing everything in my power so that I don't have to touch that raw meat. People who like put their hands all into like hamburger meat and they're all like massaging it. And I'm like, but it's under your fingernails. And I just feel like there's no amount of hand washing that can get rid of that. I don't know. Comment below if like you're also squeamish about touching raw meat. So you'll notice that uh, I am getting this meat out of a bag. That's because there are some butchers in our area. And so those butchers also provide uh, fresh meat. And so this is ground meat uh, from one of those butchers. I am assuming that the package of meat that I'm pulling out here meets the requirement for this recipe. It says one and a half pounds of ground beef. And I feel like the, these two together are two pounds of ground beef. We'll see. <laughs> if it looks like it needs more of something, then I'll put it in there. Hopefully it won't need less of something because at that point it's gonna be too late. All right, so I've got my spoon here to help break things up. And uh-oh, it looks like, <laughs> it looks like the V is still a little frozen in the middle, but not too terrible to concentrate. And not too much. And I may sprinkle in a little bit more as I start to mix it up, but just enough to get it in So there. then it says a cup of milk. So we'll go ahead and get that in there. Need it. So we'll just put some milk in there and put in the dry breadcrumbs. I will do this full cup because I feel like I need this binding agent to make sure that it actually that wrapped instead of doing the full. Oh, I should have peeled the lid off of this, but that's okay. We will just splatter until we get enough. So that's roughly enough. So I'll pour that in. Yep, and then they both say put in some salt and pepper. And so, for, it's a fourth of a teaspoon of salt and a fourth of a teaspoon of pepper. So let's see. Okay. And then I'll do the same for the ground pepper. Now it says freshly ground black pepper, which we do have a grinder back there, but I'm not, I'm not gonna do all of that. Like how am I gonna measure it? So I'm just gonna use this, which is a coarse ground black pepper. 
and I'll measure it out much easier and faster. I like to watch reality TV shows because it's like it literally is an escape from my own reality, right? So sometimes uh, during my lunch break from work, I will, you know, pop on an episode and just kind of sit and really just, I don't know, just kind of separate myself from real life and just kind of look at these people and I don't know, maybe subconsciously I'm looking at them and I'm just thinking like, wow, like that's a lot for somebody to have to go through, which then makes my own, you know, let's say challenging day at work or whatever like not feel so 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 difficult right I like to watch game shows so Chris and I have been watching different game shows uh, on Hulu we've been catching them um, and then also I like to watch um, cooking shows we like to watch cooking shows so Chris is a fan of Bobby Flay like in this cabinet right here top shelf just all kinds of cookbooks around Bobby Flay and we've tried some of the recipes and they're pretty good. We'll put our own twist to it depending on, you know, what's happening uh, in the recipe. Like if it's a whole lot of ingredients that we don't really care for, then we will mix it up a little bit. But uh, yeah, so we like to watch different cooking competitions like Chopped and we watched a few, we watch a few things from Gordon Ramsay as well. And then of course from Bobby Flay. So yeah, so that's a little bit about me. So let's see. I am now putting on the gloves so that I can really get in here and mix this. I feel like I've I've mixed it a little bit, but I haven't really incorporated the ingredients all the way throughout. So I'm going to swap out this spoon here and get these gloves dirty. Not my hands. Mm -mm. I'm going to get these gloves dirty uh, in this mixture. And then I'm going to get everything all shaped and formed and put on a, a baking sheet. I'm gonna line it with foil first, and I'm gonna get it all in the oven. Next time you see me, I'll probably be making the gravy, so I'll show you what the uh, finished product looks like with the meatloaf, because I definitely want to um, use some of the drippings from the meatloaf in the gravy. All right. Moment of truth. See how this meatloaf is doing. Oh boy. Look at that. It's definitely a loaf of meat. <laughs> it's heavy too. Alright, I got my handy dandy meat thermometer. So let me. Go ahead and get that ready. So I'm gonna see on the back of this and get it to focus. It says ground beef, 160 degrees. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. And let's start poking around in here. So on this end, of course, it's still, you know, pretty hot because it just came out of the oven. We want to give it time to actually cool off some. So then I'm going to transfer it to a different, a different pan so that it can cool off. But yeah, I feel like it's, <laughs> it's definitely done. 